Rocket League can quickly go from an insanely fun game to a horrible experience if you go against someone that just completely dismantles your playstyle. It could be a team that just doesn't leave the ball alone, someone that won't stop chasing you, a team that just waits for you to challenge just so they can hit it around you every time, or plenty of others. Almost every team has a playstyle because almost every team has strengths and weaknesses. And there are certain types of playstyles that work extremely well against others, almost like a rock, paper, scissors match except a very complex one. And because it's so complex, today I'm going to show you guys how to play against five of the most common play styles so you can compete against any team no matter what they bring to the table. Speaking of competing, today's video is sponsored by the Intel World Open. That's right, the Intel World Open is back and the best part is all of you can compete in it. The Intel World Open is a massive tournament with a 250,000 USD prize pool split between the regions. The regions are Asia Mainland, Asia Maritime and Oceania, Europe, Middle East and Africa, and Americas. The game Games in both the open qualifiers and the closed qualifiers will be double elimination with the open being best of three and the closed being best of five. Signups are open now until May 31st, then the open qualifiers begin on June 1st and end on June 13th, with the regional finals taking place on July 11th through July 14th. To sign up, just grab some friends to play with and click that link in the description. From there, you'll choose your regional qualifier and create an account if you haven't already. Then you'll put in your Rocket ID, which you can find on the Friends tab here in game. After that, you'll either create your team and give it a name, or join your team if your teammate has already created it. After creating a team, you can send your teammates the invite link from your team page, and once everyone has joined, you can sign up with the specific players you want by clicking Manage Roster. Once you do that, you're all set! I hope to see you all competing in the Intel World Open, I know I will be, and I hope to see you using the tips from this video when you do compete. So anyway, let's get back into it. The first playstyle, most often found anywhere from gold to diamond, is what I'm calling the Retreater. The Retreater playstyle is usually the type of player or team that sees Rocket League as a series of attacks and defenses. They start their attack, then when they're done, they go back to defense as you start yours. This type of player or team can be found in any game mode. The only big difference with this playstyle between the modes is obviously that there are more people to worry about in 2v2 and 3v3. But the overall idea is basically the same. When you have possession, they often just give you the midfield for free, which is a huge opportunity. Especially at this gold to diamond level, most people don't know what to do when they're given a ton of space, so they end up just sending it back to the opponents anyway. However, instead of just sending it downfield and then following your touch, you can take control and start an organized attack. This definitely does require some mechanical skill to keep the ball controlled controlled, so that's all the more reason to start practicing dribbling because that is an essential skill. Here's an example of what taking advantage of this playstyle looks like in-game. So in this example here, you'll see orange team move up on the offense, and then they'll lose possession, and then they'll just retreat back to defense. So you see here in this moment, they just lost possession, Way Tony in the corner now has the ball, and they basically see it as, okay, they have possession, let's go back and retreat and defend. So instead of sending away possession, Way Tony actually takes control, and then once he doesn't have that midfield space anymore, he sends it over to his teammate, and at that point, it's almost just a free goal. So really, the main idea is, if you notice the opponents are just going straight back every time they accidentally send away possession, Possession. Instead of just banging it downfield and then following your huge clear, you can instead predict that they're going to be going back to defense and then take your time to start an organized attack with all of your teammates. And once again here, you can see that a collected attack is just way better than just banging it downfield. The second play style is the Demoer. This particular style is completely obvious when you see it, and it happens at almost any rank. Whenever a team gets in a two-on-one -on situation or just has a player ahead of the play, they have that player rotate through to go for a bumper demo on the goalie before rotating behind. This can be a difficult style to adapt to because every demo situation is different. However, the most common situation is when you're rotating into the back post and they're trying to rotate right through you. There's two main ways I like to avoid this. One of them is just side flipping out of the way, specifically to the side closer to your goal. It's practically impossible for the demoer to read a side flip dodge, so it's almost a guarantee that you'll be safe, and you'll have a pretty fast recovery because it's faster to side flip than to single jump, and you're side flipping toward your goal so you can immediately defend in case of a shot. The second way to avoid this is by driving deeper into your goal. This is my preferred way of dodging a demo because you don't even need to jump to dodge it. You can just keep your momentum going. On top of that, if the demoer still chases you into your net, they'll have a way slower recovery which gives a big chance for a counterattack. If they chase you and miss, they'll usually just slam right into the wall inside the post and kill all their momentum. Here's an example of what these methods actually look like in-game. 
So here in this scenario, you can see that this player wants to go for that ball right now, but if he goes for it, he's probably going to get demoed before he gets there. So he first dodges the demo by flipping to the side towards the goal, and it allows for an extremely fast recovery to make the save. And you can see from the opponent's perspective, there's just almost no way to predict that. And this is the second method, and you'll see why this is just my favorite. It's so effortless, and you just keep your momentum going the whole time. But what you should keep in mind though on this one was that it was okay for me to push up to the front post here because I had someone rotating behind me to the back post. So if I didn't have someone rotating behind me here, I probably would have wanted to do some method that allows me to stay somewhere at the back post. And the reason why this works so well is because if you're this guy trying to demo the goalie, you still want to have a fast recovery out so you can rotate behind. So if the goalie goes into his own net, you are forced to have a slow recovery and it's not even guaranteed that you're going to bump him anyway. So you can see on this one from the opponent's perspective, at first, he chases the bump, but then sees that he's going way into the net, and then decides to rotate out, and gets caught on the post anyway, and it just makes it that much slower of a recovery. The third playstyle is the Ball Chaser. This playstyle exists at literally every rank, and it's one of the most difficult to play against. When you have an opponent that just doesn't leave the ball or doesn't fake challenge or anything, it can make the entire match just that much more annoying. But the best thing you can do to counter it is by not letting them control the game you actually need to watch what they're doing and react to it accordingly. I made a video entirely about this, so if you want to check it out, there's a card in the top right. The main factor that determines if you win or lose against a ball chaser is not who outplays each other more, there's really no outplaying to be had here. It all comes down to whether you react to them in time or not. So if you notice you're going against a ball chaser and you have possession, you shouldn't just close your mind off to trying to execute one specific play. You should instead just react to whatever they decide to do. If you do react to them, it often leads to a completely open net. Here's an example of what this looks like in-game. So in this scenario, there is a collision between Baynock and Toxic here at the midfield, and the ball ends up rolling pretty much halfway in between the two players that would be following up this play. However, if you are watching, you can clearly see that the ball is rolling pretty quickly over in this direction. So it's definitely safe to say that Nighthawk will get to this ball first by quite a bit of time. A lot of people in this scenario, if you're Nighthawk, you would see Circuit way far back here, and you would think, oh, there's no way he's going to push that as last man back. So you would make that assumption really early on and decide to just keep it close and control it. However, since you assumed it so early, you stopped looking at Circuit, and then he just dunks it straight into your own net. So the key here when you're playing against a team with the ball chaser style is to actually watch them all the way through and not make any assumptions. You need to actually make sure that they are going to make the correct decision and turn back. And if they don't make that correct decision and they decide to go for it anyway, then that's just a free goal for you if you were watching them the whole time. So from Nighthawk's perspective, you can see he's way closer to this ball, but he sees that Circuit isn't turning back yet. So instead of hitting the brakes and keeping it close, he just drives straight into it and hits it right above him. The fourth play style is the Mechanics Master. This is basically any player or team that likes to go for solo plays and is actually good at them. The biggest thing to remember about mechanical players, especially those that like to do aerial mechanics, is that you can't do a lot of mechanical plays if you're constantly low on boost. Most often, I don't like to tell people to just starve the opponent's boost because it takes most people a ton of practice to learn how to do that correctly without just putting yourself out of position. So instead, I tell people to just play the ball high whenever you can. If I'm constantly putting the ball in the air, the only way they can get to it is by flying. So by the time they get down from the aerial and have possession, they can't even really do much with it. Another way of preventing a team from using their mechanics is by playing the ball chaser style. This obviously does have some restrictions because if everyone on your team is constantly playing that style, then it can cause a lot of issues. But if you just look at it like always having at least one person putting pressure on the player with the ball, it makes it way harder for your opponents to play to their strengths. You often need quite a bit of space to pull off something mechanical after all. Here's what these methods look like in a real game. So in this example here, orange team is the more mechanical team and blue team has to use these strategies. So right here in this moment, this is a juicy air dribble setup for Wei Tony. The ball is bouncing with upward momentum. He's got full boost as he's going up with it and he wants to carry this all the way down to the opponent's half. So Nighthawk being on the less mechanical blue team, even if he's not good enough to read the mechanics that Wei Tony has, he can still put himself somewhere in the way over here in this area. And even if he's not going to hit it, he's still acting as a threat that Wei Tony has to try and work around. So you can see here from Wei Tony's perspective, he tries to take it up with his full boost for an air dribble, but he sees that Nighthawk is right there behind the ball, so instead he turns his card to prepare for a 50-50. But then of course it turns out that Nighthawk couldn't read it after all, but it doesn't matter, Nighthawk did his job because Wei Tony now can't do his mechanical play. So he tries to recover the air dribble after that, and he can't really do much with it. 
Obviously, in this situation, it would be best if Nighthawk could just read Waitoni in the first place, but sometimes you have to cut your losses and just accept that they're really mechanical. I can't always read them, but at least let me force them to do something about it. So here's another situation. If you find that both of your teammates are not available for a pass and you can't really keep it close because of the ball's momentum, and if you were to just shoot it on net, it would be an easy save, then the best choice in this situation, especially against a mechanical team, is to play the ball high so you're forcing them to use boost. So you can see the full play here. Just, well, I don't have any options. I'll just play it high. Forces one to go up, causes a double commit as well, and then it turns into a free goal. Because the thing is, if a team is really mechanical, that a lot of the time means that they're more likely to make a decision mistake. So if you just place it high in the air like that, that makes them use a lot of their boost, and it gives a high chance of a double commit. The final play style is the adapter. This kind of is a weird one, and it has to do with putting everything together. You really won't see this until you're at least grand champion most of the time. If you're a high level team and plan on playing in the Intel World Open, this one will probably be super important for you. The adapter is a player or team that is not necessarily trying to play in a particular style, but instead, they are trying to adapt to how you play. The reason I say this doesn't usually happen until you're at least Grand Champion is because, especially in 3v3, until you get there, most people are just trying to focus on themselves as a player or team. But at higher ranks, especially in tournaments where it's a multi-game series, your opponents will be trying to adapt to you fairly often. So the best way to counter that is by changing your style part of the way through a game or series. So if you're trying to slow the pace of the game and it works at first, but then by the end of the game they start to catch on, and the next, you can do the opposite and just play completely fast. I've played against teams that do this before, and it's extremely hard to predict. Just when I think I'm adapting to them, they start playing in a completely different way, and it forces me to start from scratch and work from behind. So if you're in doubt and a team is starting to predict the way you're playing, a simple switch up of any aspect of your playstyle can change the game dramatically. Here's an example of this. Alright, in this situation, Orange Team is trying really hard to adapt to the Blue Team, but Blue Team does a really good job of not having one particular playstyle. So here in this example, you can see that this player jumped straight in for the ball, playing super aggressive, and they didn't end up hitting it, but they were quite an annoyance. Definitely enough of an annoyance to where this Orange Team should take note of that. So like here, if I'm this player on Orange Team, and I see one guy fly in right here, and then another guy flying right here. I'm probably thinking, wow, this team is super aggressive. I gotta be prepared for that next time. But if later on in the game or series, if you're playing in the Intel World Open, if you just start doing fake challenges over and over again, the other team is gonna be super paranoid about it and they're gonna send away possession a lot. So from the perspective of this orange player, you can see they were trying to predict the blue team's decision because they are playing super aggressive earlier on in this game. So they're expecting some pretty aggressive and early challenges. But since this blue team randomly switched up the pace, now suddenly they're really paranoid about those fake challenges and they just ended up sending away possession. And in this situation, it turned into a goal. So switching up your playstyle drastically like this can help out a ton if you're going against a team that's really trying to adapt to you. That's going to be it for the video. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to sign up for the Intel World Open by clicking the link in the description. Signups close on May 31st. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.